doing okay? Fucking right, pig. Kuno's filling bathtubs with that shit. Kuno's a kingpin. Fuck no, pig. Kuno ain't dealing to the popo. Not doing the pork pen for your sad speed habit. You don't know, Kuno. He's got to at least know a source. Look at him. You need to figure this out somehow. You need to befriend him first. Kuno doesn't fucking care. This is not the cleanest bathtub in the world, but it's cleaner than you are right now. Ah, that soap scum smell. It smells like life, at least compared to you. This is not the cleanest bathtub in the world, but it's cleaner than you are right now. Ah, that soap scum smell. It smells like life, at least compared to you. The bathtub slowly fills with water. The water beckons. The water is only lukewarm, but still comforting, like amniotic fluid. A few beer cans are bobbing up and down along your flanks, like sad duckies. You feel nice and lonely, and so, so tired. Now, you are alone with your thoughts in the tub. But it's easier than being alone with your thoughts outside the tub. They're not even really thoughts, just assorted sensations. None of them acute enough to focus on. Your fingers grow pale and are covered with tiny whirls as the water cools. What are you doing? You're not some fat fish in a fucking aquarium. Time to get moving. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. It's going to take more than one bath to get rid of that stench. Then, houses along a narrow street. A video rental. Darkness on the planet's curvature. The waterline recedes as you stand. You are cold now. Your clothes stick to your still moist skin.
Does Kuno care? Kuno doesn't fucking care. It's not Kuno. It's Kuno S. Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something. Something very bad. She came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name. Kuno S was the one who wound him up and directed him. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. She came all in all. Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on Fuck you whispering about. He's whispering too. He's going with it, but watch what happens. Fuck you f***ers whispering about! If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. Crazy? You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She's smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Stop talking to him! Kuno, I'm fucking warning you! You're gonna get us into shit! She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see! Did Kuno not tell ya? Kuno told ya! Kuno talks to whoever he wants! Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her, so she can't read his lips. Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like, actually a killer. His little green eyes are fixed on yours. Fucking yeah. Kuno knows you don't want to face this right now. This dark shit. Kuno faces this shit every day. Makes Kuno's skin crawl. She's probably killed a pig too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Forget Kuno said that. Kuno was just shitting. Kuno was just running his mouth. Kuno's stupid like that. A cop would be too large for her to overpower, but a determined child of her size can still kill the vulnerable, the elderly, the homeless, or other, other children. The creature peers at you both from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. Kuno falls silent. He does not look at you when he replies. Kuno, there, uh, that's it. Uh, that's what Kuno is starting to think, yeah. Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Look, Kuno's gonna put you at ease. We didn't do it. He speaks the truth, my liege. Yeah, she's psycho. None of that kiddie psycho. Cat burn and shit. She does the real deal. Snuff radio shit. 
Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. Fuck knows. She says it's the song of her people or some shit. Crazy people. The fucking knackies. I don't know. Some things are too awful to dwell on. The knackies and runkaris might be some kind of defense mechanism. Fuck no, she's not me sister. She's just a stray who got in. Like a mad dog or some shit. Yeah, she was just there. What was that, Kuno? She was in the hallway, dripping wet, by the fucking shoe rack, in the dark. Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days, in the corner, every time Kuno went out. I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home and she's sleeping under the desk, under a pile of clothes, like a dog. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there. Or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. C doesn't either. Kuno's got this shit under control. <laughs> listen, listen. C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C. You fuck with Kuno. You threaten her. You threaten to take her away. This is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. I I'm going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her. Sneak up on you later and fuck you up. Do you understand? All right. Now we can do business. Yeah? What do you want? Kuno can hook you up with... I don't look him up with shit, Kuno. See? Relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. Remember when you tried to get Kuno to hook you up? We can get on that now. If you run a little errand for the Kuno, me and you, Kuno's gonna hook you up with illegal narcotics. See, it's tension and release with Kuno. Now we releasing. The pan buying shit, that's on now too. 90% discount for Kuno's pig. Kuno can flex. Kuno flexes for hobos. Kuno sees you're in need. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Fuck, does Kuno care? Kuno gets it from his dad. Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. That's where Kuno gets his lightning on. Problem is, Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Streets going mad. Kuno's got to throw his dirty popo man at it. Dirty popo man is you. In there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half of the speed. Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He's the most violent man in Revishol. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks, too. Are you sure you can take on the most violent man in Revachon? In your condition? Like half. A baggy, but like in this vial. That's half a gram, sir. Yeah, half a G. Want it or not? Fuck you talking about half a G? This shit is giant grade A shit. So clean you can barely see it. You can barely see it because there's barely any. Okay, Kuno's listening.
sure, whatever. If you survive, make sure to bring that ship back to Kuno. Kuno's almost out. You wouldn't like the Kuno when he's out. Kuno's violent dad's got Kuno's key. So you need to fuck your way in there. Go to the pier side. Bang on the door till the cleaning gimp lets you in. That's how Kuno does it. Then you go to room 12 and kick down the door. Police violence style. That's what Kuno does. And then it's action time. You're locked in the room with violent fuckhead. That's it. Next time Kuno sees you, you better have his shit. Kuno doesn't fucking care. The 15th Indo tribe. Because there was. The 15th Indo tribe was comprised of eight kids from Forberg and North Jamrock, running from wild dogs in the valley, hiding scents under rocks and stealing clothes off clotheslines, and sometimes even the copper wiring of phone lines. You may have been one of them. This must be a childhood memory. The 15th Indo tribe was your Indo tribe, set to rule in Cylinder. The rest of the kids are dead now. Car accidents and drug overdoses. Only you remain. But this time, you hear an elderly woman's voice calling out from inside. Stop banging on the door! I'm not letting any more strangers inside! Ha! <laughs> the police! Everyone knows the police don't come round here! No. I already told you. I won't be responsible for any more strangers getting into the building. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. Backyard door. There must be another entrance to the east. What's that noise down there? You see a young man on 
balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. There's no trouble. I'm just speaking in a lowered voice. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Is it really that important? Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Help you? No, sorry, gendarme. I have to run. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. Martin Martinez? Good local name. Let's go with that. I can tell that you finally got him down. Thank you. It was quite a disturbing sight, even by Martinez's standards. Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Wait. Is someone else investigating the lynching? No, not you. Some more muscular type. I couldn't tell you. We don't usually see much of the gendarmerie around here. Last week? I don't know. Look. It'll take more than rain to bring this place back to life. He's deflecting. He's young with a sharp memory. He hasn't had time to drown it in booze and chemicals. I had a friend over. He was my Sunday friend. A Sunday friend? How intriguing. He doesn't reply, gesturing no with his cigarette. Under the gray sky, the neighboring windows are streaked with rain. No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Time to bring out your secret charm. Tears and begging. Show him your emotional side. Throw yourself before his very feet like a dog. No, for God's sake, I don't want you to cry. Listen, I really have to go. Ah. There it goes. Wasted. You would have gotten at least a few good drags out of it. Good luck with the investigation. stone like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. Looks like it could belong to the building's front door.
Well, hello. Someone seems to have found himself a bottle of alcohol. Here's where the magic happens. Light reflects off the green glass of the Commodore Red. The gods have been generous. Better pop it open before they change their minds. Wow, the gods of mass production have made this alcohol container laughably easy to open. A child could have done it. Oh yes, the chest pain and the dizziness. You've suffered long enough. Now it's time to drink, to live. Why is it always about you? Your heart problem, your coronary artery. Think about us, we're in this together. You and your wacky tie of substance abuse. Do it for us, pop it open. There's a satisfying pop as the cork jumps out, and the hair on your back rises like an army at attention. You've been here before. Welcome back, detective. You're home now. You see a flash of teeth, a young woman smiling at you, near some railway overpass in your ruined past. She is gorgeous, and she is yours. Nothing. Some mental stuff. Nothing to be worried about. Physically, you'll be strong as an ox. A golden sun melts down your throat. Its rays filling your nostrils with sunshine. Your stomach melts from it into a happy, gooey mess. So does your mind. All the bad things are melting. You're you again. A real cop. A real detective. Incredibly well done. In the bottom right corner of the screen, there's an alcohol button. Alcohol gives plus one to physique skills. Physical instrument, half light, electrochemistry, endurance, pain threshold, and shivers. This is good before rolling a white check, but damages your morale. And remember... From the void we came, and to the void we must return. A shabby door hangs oddly on its hinges, secured to the doorframe with a safety chain. An unpaid energy bill is attached, threatening to cut off the electricity. It's addressed to Mr. Uno Doroita. Your heartbeat quickens, palms go sweaty. The siren of amphetamine is singing you her song. No response. The apartment numbers have fallen off the door, leaving the panel with a sticky one-shaped shadow 
and a marker drawn too. You'll need to equip the chain cutters to enter. Snip right through the metal. shabby door hangs oddly on its hinges, secured to the door frame with a safety chain. An unpaid energy bill is attached, threatening to cut off the electricity. It's addressed to Mr. Uno Doroita. Snip. The cutter goes through them like dead leaves. The links fall to the ground on the other side of the door. Don't let the quiet fool you. The beast is in there somewhere ready to rip you to shreds with a broken bottle. You can just go in now. lies open on the table, covering a stack of utility bills. Right next to it, in plain sight, sits a small bottle of amphetamine, conveniently equipped with a straw. Score! It's right there, baby. Today's your lucky day. You pocket the bottle as if it were the most natural thing in the world. Don't wait. Celebrate. Blast that shit right here. Take inventory of it once this boring table shit is done. Blast it before you face the beast, De Ruita. You're going to need the encouragement. Hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. The magnesium levels in your blood are dangerously low. It's about the low magnesium levels and not the high alcohol levels. Yeah, the other things. Long live the other things. Made you strong as an ox they have. Yes, and it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish due to the lack of magnesium in your bloodstream. You need to get so magged up. You've probably had two heart attacks and a minor stroke already. And the only prescription is insane amounts of magnesium. One stroke? Don't be so modest. He's having one right now. Yes. If you want to live, you need to evolve. You need to transcend the carbon barrier. Go to the apothecary and buy insane amounts of magnesium. It will reverse the damage to your circulatory system. Just remember, it's not the alcohol. Buy more of that too. Alcohol is not the problem. 
and it's certainly not the dextroamphetamine, nor smoking for 40 years. It's the lack of magnesium and excess of coffee. You should stop drinking coffee. It wreaks havoc on your gastrointestinal system. A bundle of clothes heaped on the bed. A stained parka, some towels and a duvet, some socks even. In the dark, it looks like a nest. Something underneath there is breathing. It doesn't give a shit that you're a cop. Stop your hand now, or you're gonna die. It's not too late. No one's going to blame you for backing out. You don't have to do this. Just get out. Your hand touches a greasy duvet, covered in cigarette burns and ketchup stains. You hear a growl. There is something alive underneath it. You see a 60-year-old, fat, red-headed man passed out from large amounts of alcohol and God knows what else. The smell of shit rises from his mouth. You don't have to take him down. He's already down. A lump of flesh is sticking out from under the blanket. It seems to be twitching from time to time, like the paw of an animal who's having a bad dream. And look, the other foot is camouflaged by a striped sock bearing the name Max Tor on the sole. Three toes are poking out of a hole. Max Tor is a gas company. He's wearing free socks from a gas company. They probably came with the bills. A groan rises from the man's throat, dry like a death rattle. He's trying to say something in his sleep. The light from the window is weak, but it seems like he is. His wild, unwashed mane bears a familiar ginger tone. Even the hair on his chest is coppery. Don't forget his face, the bloated and reddened cheeks, the bulbous nose. This would be Kuno after 30 years of alcohol and substance abuse. There's still plenty to be scared of here, just not what you thought. No response. A pair of half-open bug eyes is staring back at you from the dark, empty and frozen. It's clear that the person behind them is not awake. His half-open eyes give him the look of a dead man. But he is in there and not enjoying himself. The man groans once again, but his tongue keeps failing him. It's impossible to make out the syllables. A hand emerges from the blankets, trying to gesticulate something. And then it dawns upon you, clear and surreal. Pig, he says. He's trying to call you a pig. His hand falls back on the bed, limp and defeated. A loud snore escapes his mouth. He's asleep again. The pile of blankets grunts. It's hard to say if there's anything left you could do. A coronary artery bypass graft? Take out his liver and replace it with a new one? Somehow undo 20 years of neurological damage from stimulants? Silence. Only heat emanates from the sleeping body.
a shift in temperature. The air chills around you. Dust settles on the stony floor. A former architect stands before a slice of window, a room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still and frozen, with temperatures falling down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Is red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping the plan. Traces of sadness are visible in her expression. Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects the room with the neighboring apartment. Ideas for arranging the furniture have been jotted down. It's clean and empty, with new tapestry embellishing the walls. A standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool in the middle of the room. She had an eye for beauty. Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> this woman's health is failing her. There's not much to do. Not in this damp. I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> You're still worried. It's very worrying. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the coal room. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. And that's all I need from this world. And all she gets, too. The coastal wind beats down hard on the coal room door, outside. Splashes of waves make the balcony slippery. Oh, you'll find plenty of Martins here. Don't you worry. Key brain. Someone played a trick on you. Martin Martinez is a name for anyone who comes from Martinez. Like Jim Jamrock or Raoul Ravagel. Oops, you really didn't get the joke there. Yes, yes, I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? Talk? <laughs> he lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Ask away, policeman. Some lunatic lost his mind. All kinds of morons pass through these halls. With how small these rooms are, wouldn't you want to break the wall down? I don't want to talk about Dewitas. Addicts, all of them. And sometimes I hear them screaming. They don't like me cleaning behind their door. Think I'm listening on their fights. So she doesn't. Not after that one time. There's a that one time here. It didn't get physical. She heard something she doesn't want to hear again. No one likes them in this building. It's only because of the kids they haven't been thrown out. 
I don't like talking about those people. She mumbles some kind of a response, then hacks something into her handkerchief. So you got Kuno's Kilo. Here is how we do it. First, you give Kuno Kuno's Kilo, then Kuno gives you half back. That's how we split it. It's the best way, street way. Where down the street is? You sent your little friend in dressed as a hooker, distracted him. That's some sick shit. Tell your little slanty-eyed friend, respect from the Kuno. Kuno wants to hear all about it, but first we split the kilo, then we shoot the shit. Kuno knows what Kuno means. All right. Kuno knew you'd try that sneaky pig shit on him. Tell him, Kuno! Kuno's got brains. This shit doesn't surprise Kuno. So Kuno's gonna give you one more chance. Know this, pig. Shit is major. Major fucking choice, pig. Kuno won't take this shit lightly. The pieces are moving, pig. This is fucking domino shit. It's hard to see how not giving a boy a bag of amphetamine would cause some catastrophic cascade response. Tick, 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 tick. Decision time. What's it gonna be? You gonna fuck the Kuno? All right, now we're talking. Whoa, that's heavy. There you go. More than half in there. Kuno's fucking honorable like that. Now tell me, how the fuck are you still alive, pig? The fuck do you know about Kuno's life? Kuno's got plans. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, we got plans. Six meters underground, below piping from before the war, the collapsed remains of the Martinez storm drain system. There are two stolen flashlights with piles of batteries next to them, beside two bedrolls, in the dark and opening into the lower tunnels. Yeah, so fucking what? Fuck are you talking to Kuno about that kiddie shit? He's trying to fuck you again. Fuck out of here. Kuno knows it's fucking lame. That's why Kuno changed it. Kuno can change his name into anything. Gonna change my name into f Don't change your name into that, Kuno. Fuck right there were, fucking three years or some shit. Yeah, that's right. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about that electricity and light shit. Just wants to pound on people and drink. That's right, it's a shithole. Kuno's gonna move underground, la rhyme shit, ancient shit. Kuno's gonna live in a fucking catacomb. Yeah, 
get in a tomb, Kuno. Yeah, you do some sambo shit, sneak in. Was the Beano Cloud hooker thing real? Wah! His posture changes. The swaying rooster motion stops for a second. Then he gets it going again, reorienting himself. Fuck right. Kuno's dad was sleeping like a bum. Kuno told ya. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about anything. Fucking breaking and entering and shit. That's nothing to Kuno's dad. You got lucky, pig. Kuno knew this. Kuno's fucking violent fiend dad's been drinking hard lately. Kuno knew you have a way in. Narrow window. Kuno window. Yeah, Kuno's dad is fucking nothing. Fucking coma shit, stroke shit. Kuno's dad is so fucking violent. He's had a stroke many times. Shit. Kuno's gonna have one too. Gonna be just like Kuno's dad. Speed shit, crime shit, fucking on the bed. Kuno's gonna go out like Kuno's dad. Revishal West style. Stop saying all this sad shit, Kuno. There's a touch of grief. In there. Fuck are you talking, sad? <laughs> Kuno's got hard shit, death shit, nothing shit. Get your fucking nun ass out of here before Kuno fucks it dead. You think cause you brought Kuno one gram of speed, your friends now? Turn into Kuno ain't turning into shit. Kuno is Kuno is that shit. If he doesn't stop soon, he's going to collapse from exhaustion. He's red all over. Kuno won! Oh, you won, Kuno! Yeah, pig, this shit is done. Now get the fuck out of Kuno's face. Kuno needs to drop the bomb. Kuno doesn't fucking care. <laughs>